Africa. What are some of the major issues and priorities facing the continent in 2017? Hello, I'm Arnold Naidu and this is The Heat. Representatives and leaders from all over Africa are gathering in Addis Ababa, Ethiopia this week for the 28th African Union Summit. Issues like the economy and security will be on the agenda. And with the recent change of leadership in the Gambia and several major elections ahead this year, political change in Africa will likely be part of the discussion too. We begin with CGTN correspondent Deji Badmus, who joins us now from Lagos. And Deji, as representatives from around Africa meet in Addis Ababa, what are some of the major issues and priorities facing Africa in 2017? Well, thanks, and then As the African leaders gather in Addis Ababa, they would have a lot on their plate, uh, from issues of infrastructural development, politics, to the very important issue of security on the continent that you've been talking about. Now, the top on the agenda of the summit will be the election of the AU Commission chairperson. As you know, the commission is responsible for the running and delivery of uh, the AU agenda aimed at advancing a greater continental integration for a more uh, prosperous Africa. It's actually the secretariat that runs the AU. So the summit will elect a new chairperson, uh, a deputy chairperson, and of course, eight commissioners. I mean, these people are actually in charge of running uh, the AU commission. Now, five candidates are actually vying for the position of the AU commission chairperson. We have, of course, uh, the foreign affairs minister of Bot Botswana now, who is a candidate of uh, the Southern Africa Development Community. Uh, we also have um, another candidate from uh, Chad, that's Dr. Musa Faki Mohammed. And, uh, of course, there's another candidate from Equatorial Guinea. We also have Amina Mohammed uh, from Kenya and uh, Batili, that's Abdullahi uh, Batili now of Senegal. Now, one of these candidates will succeed uh, Ms. Lamini Zuma, who is stepping down as the AU chairperson to join local politics in her country, South Africa. The summit is also expected to deliberate on uh, AU reforms that will transform the secretariat into an authority. Now, this proposed authority will have a broader mandate. Also on the table for the leaders will be the conflicts in uh, Mali, South Sudan, Burundi, Central African Republic, as well as the issue of terrorism and extremism on the continent. To talk about places like Nigeria, where Boko Haram is still, uh, you know, bearing its fangs, if you like. The leaders will have to come out with the best possible way to resolve the political crisis in places like um, South Sudan, Burundi, the Central African Republic, Mali, and, of course, um, the DRC. Uh, we know what is happening in the DRC, even though there's, uh, there's been an agreement now uh, for uh, President Joseph Kabila not to do another term. Now, another important agenda for the leaders will be the establishment of a continental free trade area by 2017. Uh, it is known as uh, CFTA for short and is aimed at promoting the smooth movement of goods and services across the continent. Now, that has been a big headache for African countries. And talks on this actually began in 2015. The expectation is that uh, it will be launched this year. Now, when that um, initiative is operational, it will bring together all African countries, creating a combined uh, population of more than 1 billion people and a combined gross domestic product of more than uh, $3.5 trillion. So the summit is expected to also consider uh, the request by Morocco now to rejoin the AU. As you would know, Morocco withdrew from the OAU some 32 years ago, but it is now seeking uh, to come back. Uh, so uh, these and more, of course, uh, these African leaders will be discussing when they eventually meet on the 30th and the 31st of this month. Anan? Sounds like a busy summer. Thanks, Deji. That's CGTN's Deji Badmus reporting from Lagos. Joining me from Addis Ababa is CGTN global anchor Beatrice Marshall. She anchors Africa Live and is the host of Talk Africa. With us from London is Kayoda Ogundamisi. He is a Nigerian commentator on African and international affairs. Also joining us from Beijing is He Wenping. She is a professor and director of African Studies at the Chinese Academy of Social Sciences. And with us from Cairo, we are joined by CGTN correspondent Adel Makruki. Welcome to all of you to the show. Beatrice, let me start with you. Before we get to the AU summit, let's talk about uh, the situation in the Gambia. 
President Jomé, or ex-President Jomé, has left the country. What's the outlook for the new incoming President, Barrow? Well, President Barrow um, has been in Senegal, Dakar, where he was sworn in uh, last week. Uh, it was a little bit of a difficult situation for him to return to the country at that point. But uh, President Yaya Jame has since left the country for exile in Equatorial Guinea. Now, there are some new developments coming out of the African Union because uh, there was an understanding that President Jame may get immunity and that would protect him from harassment and so forth in his uh, country of the Gambia. But since then, of course, the African Union says that that decision will have to be deliberated by the Peace and Security Council, so that will have to be waited upon. Uh, as it stands now, President Adama Barrow will be expected at the African Union where he will make his first address here before the uh, heads of state in, in Addis Ababa, uh, the seat of the African Union. But the situation in the Gambia is pretty much back to normal. They are awaiting uh, President uh, Adama Barrow there. Uh, and of course, uh, after the exit of uh, President Yaya Jame, we do not know what the state of the country is at the moment because uh, we, we also received reports that... Uh, uh, you know, the, the public coffers, for instance, were empty, and there was going to be a lot of work for uh, President Adama Barrow when he does return to the country. Okay, Beatrice, let's talk a little bit more about what's going on at the AU summit. We have Africa, a massive continent, uh, a billion people, 54 countries. Uh, what are you hearing from delegates there about what this summit is going to be talking about? At the moment, though, the summit has been uh, has designated uh, youth affairs as their theme for this agenda. But of course, as we know, uh, that normally that agenda is only the agenda on paper. What the delegates and the heads of state are actually going to be talking about is something else other than the actual focus. For today, they have been holding a pre-summit on uh, youth and women affairs and youth empowerment on the continent and on what to do with the 200 million young people across the continent who want jobs, who want a better life and so forth and what to do with with that bulge because in in by 2045 there are indications that 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 number will be double or triple uh, but as of now of course we do know that uh, the main focus for uh, this au summit will be the will be the, the chair of the African Union Commission because the, uh, the mission of the current African Union Commission chair, Kosozana Dlamini Zuma, comes to an end and they will be electing a new African Union Commission chair. There are five candidates uh, in the front running at the moment and of course that is what is dominating the discussions here. And then the delegates will also be looking at peace and security issues, conflict such as Libya has been making uh, the news in Africa this year, issues such as South Sudan still unresolved and of course many are welcoming the new developments in the Gambia and are quite pleased that West African leaders took the lead on that one on, on uh, the Gambia in particular and they are saying this is the beginning of uh, the end of the, uh, you know, the, the, the mission by the African Union to see guns silent on the continent by 2020. So those are some of the issues that will be coming up. But of course, topping the agenda here and topping uh, the focus here will be the election of the African Union Commission chair. Okay, let's bring in Coyote in uh, London. And Coyote, let's talk about the economic situation in Africa right now. Let's start with Nigeria. Of course, Nigeria is going through some difficult times right now, tough times because of the falling price in oil. But let's not forget that uh, Africa is home to five of the world's fastest growing economies. What is your assessment of the uh, African economy right now? What are the challenges and opportunities here? Uh, let's start with Nigeria. I think the, the fall in the price of oil has um, affected Nigeria in a very uh, dramatic way. Uh, things are really bad. The cost of, li cost of living is high. And um, the, the massive history of corruption that bedeviled the country is affecting the economy. Uh, the current government does not seem to have um, a quick fix solution. Um, uh, there is uh, an attempt to actually uh, rein in on uh, recurrent expedition and bring in capital projects. But generally in Africa, uh, the economic downturn is um, affecting the continent uh, uh, in a very negative way. Uh, but efforts are being made by private investors to actually uh, bring forth a solution that will be beneficial to, to, the, to the masses in Africa. Uh, the challenges are seen to increase in migration. There are a lot of the of a lot of victims of the uh, trans-Saharan uh, cross-border towards Europe uh, from Nigeria, and this is really uh, this is affecting the country in a very in an extremely negative way. Ho Wenping, China, of course, has very close political, diplomatic, economic, and trade relations with the countries of Africa. Recently, the Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi 
visited five African countries and is encouraging them to become a part of that big Chinese economic uh, outreach or initiative called the One Belt, One Road initiative. What kind of economic trade um, investment can we expect between China and the African continent this year? Uh, well, as you uh, rightly put forward, uh, China now has been attaching a great uh, importance uh, to the Africa. Uh, with, uh, uh, you know, Chinese Foreign Minister Wang Yi's visit to Africa, I think uh, uh, he has already uh, made very clear China will continue to keep our promise uh, be met. Uh, that promise has been made uh, during uh, President Xi Jinping's visit to Johannesburg to join this uh, uh, China-African uh, Jobsburg Summit, so uh, which uh, refers to as high as uh, 60 billion uh, US dollar, those uh, uh, package of uh, China's development cooperation uh, with Africa. So two uh, major uh, points. Uh, one is uh, the infrastructure building. Uh, uh, last year, in the year 2016, we have uh, already heard the good news coming from Africa, that is the railway uh, linking with uh, uh, Djibouti and Addis, uh, Addis Ababa now has been already into the operation. And many other uh, big uh, infrastructure projects like uh, uh, road and uh, also the port building and the railway building and uh, also the uh, dam building, all the under uh, very uh, you know smooth progress. So another another area I think uh, is this uh, industrialization uh, and also pushing forward this integration. Uh, actually, this is one of the African uh, Union summits, folks, uh, because uh, to uh, make this market bigger. And uh, stronger, I think that's the precondition uh, for the industrialization. Otherwise, uh, those fragmented uh, market will be a hurdle for any uh, like trade, intra-trade uh, within African countries, and also uh, those uh, industri industrial and manufacturing industry development. So that's why uh, those uh, economic trade zone, I think, now becoming uh, one of the folks. Uh, also will be coming an uh, anchor uh, to, uh, you know, to generate it, uh, those uh, capacity of uh, uh, manufacturer uh, industry. Right. So nowadays there are as, as many as seven, I think those uh, trade and, and the industrial zones has been built. So that also echoes with African unions and other folks. That is to build this uh, free trade zone, yep. continentally free trade zone. Yeah, actually, this is a thing has been put forward many, many years ago by African Union, uh, but it has been uh, prolonged uh, year and by year, so it hasn't been, uh, uh, you know, in a good shape so far. Right. Okay, Adel, what are conditions like in North Africa, where you are right now? You're in Cairo, in Egypt. What are the economic priorities there? Well, um, creating jobs is the most um, urgent priority for Egypt and most most um, North African countries. Um, the demographics are quite similar. The number of populations from one country to the other is definitely different, but we talk about a huge number uh, of percentage for youth. Uh, we're talking about um, a, a struggle, struggling economies. If there is um, growth rates, it's uh, within the first uh, five digits in, in numerical. So we're talking about one, two, three, four, five percent uh, in uh, most countries. That's when it's the best case. So definitely for the average we're talking from two to three percent that's not even um, enough uh, for um, creating the jobs necessary with uh, to cope up with the population um, environment so that's one side for it. to do that um, some countries um, like um, Egypt Morocco uh, for example they're focusing on uh, bringing in foreign direct investments Algeria too has been um, quite successful uh, in that recently but the problem is um, that these countries are more or less in competition uh, with each other uh, because of their geographic um, location and each is trying to get foreign investments from um, the far sides of the globe to the Middle East so that they, it would be an access point to South Europe and the rest uh, of the African um, continent. And therefore, this comes the challenge that um, not every country is working in coherence to start this development together, but every one of them or each one of them is trying to um, track these FDIs um, together. But it is quite challenging, mainly because of the political um, situation in Libya in right. particular and um, the militant insurgency in the region that makes it challenging for that to happen. 
Right, Beatrice, staying with the economic conditions in sub-Saharan Africa, of course, one indicator of economic progress in Africa is the fact that one in three Africans is now uh, considered to be middle class. So what is, the, what is your assessment of Africa's overall economic future? I mean, we have challenges that Africa faces in terms of the construction of infrastructure, uh, education, uh, technological skills, as uh, well as issues that Adil just mentioned, youth unemployment. Youth unemployment remains a major factor indeed and, and on the continent. Uh, and as I did mention the earlier points of um, what they are discussing here, that is why they have made it a focus uh, of this year's African Union Summit. What do we do with our youth unemployment and the lack of employment across the continent? But if you look back over the last 10 years, of course, and, and uh, we, we're now talking about uh, 10 or 6 of the fastest growing economies still being in Africa up to today, we're talking about uh, Africa's economic prospects being at an average 5% over the last 10 years. So the economic prospects on the continent still look pretty good. The uh, African Union, the African uh, Development Bank, I feel very optimistic about the prospects of Africa going forward. Of course, they are mentioning that in the last few years, the commodities uh, the commodity economies in Africa have had a, a difficulty, starting from Nigeria, uh, South Africa, uh, Cote d'Ivoire. But some of those countries had actually diversified their economy. So some of those commodity-dependent countries may not have been as hard hit because Africans learned from the experience of the 1970s when uh, the commodity, uh, the commodity-backed countries, uh, completely disintegrated. But of course, today a lot of countries have diversified. Uh, you talked about one in three or three in ten Africans now being middle class. Yes, uh, and, and China has been talking about that as well. There is a large consumer market that is growing now in Africa. There are more uh, Africans now uh, considering themselves as middle class. And many African economies are talking about becoming middle income countries by, you know, in 10 years. Uh, Kenya, for instance, is talking about becoming a middle-income country in five years. Ethiopia, uh, this year, is, uh, last year, 2016, posted double digits. Uh, Rwanda, as well, posted a double-digit economic growth. So the prospects on the continent are still growing, uh, despite uh, the perception that uh, the commodity-dependent countries like South Africa and Nigeria may have dragged the overall perspective of the continent uh, down by a notch in the last year or so. Okay, we're going to take a quick break right now. When we come back, much more on the issues and priorities important to Africa in 2017. Stay with us. You're watching The Heat.